Today's project is to tune up a hard starting 5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton small engine. This label shows this engine is at least 20 years old and has probably never been fully tuned up. This piece of equipment was given to me by someone who moved into a small house with no mature trees. It had been shipped from California so the fuel tank was empty. My first step was to add some fuel and try to start it. It was very hard starting, so I did the baseline check. I checked for spark, then I checked the air filter, and I found that it had been saturated with fuel from the jostling during its trip across the country. The next step was to check the condition of the engine oil. This engine does not have a dipstick, so I removed the fill plug and tested the oil condition with a screwdriver as a dipstick and wiped it on a paper towel. This clip will show you the condition of the engine oil and why I decided it was time to do a tune-up. When I first removed the drain plug, no oil would flow, so I inserted a screwdriver in the drain tube and released the clog. The oil was extremely contaminated and drained very slowly. The engine was covered in grime and the model number was hidden beneath it, so I started to clean the engine to see if I could discover where they had tucked away the model number. I began the cleaning process with a heavy duty engine degreaser and an old paintbrush. A greasy engine traps the heat and makes the engine run hotter. It took some time and a thorough cleaning to find the model number hidden in the upper engine shroud. This information was vital for ordering repair parts and the specifications for the engine. This video had been recorded last year and set aside. When I began to edit, I noticed some of the teardown footage was missing. I believe the camera ran out of memory and that footage was never captured. The installation footage should clarify any questions you might have about the removal process. I began the teardown process by removing the carburetor and the fuel tank as an assembly. Then I removed the fan shroud and finally the head. The first stage of the engine cleaning is done, so I covered the intake and exhaust ports with a plastic bag to prevent water infiltration. I kept the water pressure low and the PVC vent facing down to prevent water intrusion. To check my progress, I used a leaf blower to remove any standing water and to prevent the iron ignition components from rusting. I sprayed the head with oven cleaner to remove the hard carbon deposits, but I had limited success. I switched to a Dremel tool with a wire brush at low speed to remove the thick black soot. I found the process worked better with lubricant. A soapy water or engine degreaser with the wire wheel improves the process tremendously. It floats away the debris and cleans the wire wheel as you go. I found it improved the surface finish similar to wet sanding an automobile. My last step was to polish the inside of the head with Neverdell to remove any residue and remove any hot spots. I used foaming engine cleaner on the outside of the head to dig the grease and grime out from between the engine cooling fins. I let the soap soak in and remove as much as possible and then cleaned the residue with an acid brush. To clean the carbon off the top of the piston and the valves, I used brake fluid. After soaking, the carbon was removed with a plastic scraper and a non-metallic brush. It was polished with Neverdull and final cleaned with alcohol to remove any residue. With the piston and valves cleaned and polished, it was time to install a new head gasket. I brought back a photo of the old head gasket so you could see where it was burnt and leaking. Let's examine this head gasket carefully. Look for exhaust trails that lead to the edges of the gasket or to the holes. This allows the spent gases to escape the cylinder, thereby reducing its power and efficiency. I used a wire wheel mounted to a bench grinder to clean and burnish the threads of the head bolts. I have used this technique in many of my other videos. The torque on the head bolts is 140 inch pounds. The torque sequence begins with the two center bolts on the length of the head, then it progresses to the four corner bolts in a crisscross pattern. 
and lastly the two center bolts. It's best if the bolts are torqued in one sequence at half torque pressure and then followed up with full torque pressure using the same sequence. Briggs & Stratton maximum torque for the spark plug is 15 foot-pounds. That is the equivalent of 180 inch-pounds. I cleaned the carbon from the spark plug electrode prior to installation. Now I'm polishing the terminal with a wire brush. When I removed the carburetor from the fuel tank, I noticed a crunchy yellow deposit clogging the fuel pickup tube. My next step was to drain the fuel tank to discover the source of the problem. I removed the foam and thoroughly cleaned the fuel tank. During this process, I discovered the problem was actually the foam was breaking down and clogging the filter. Like a rotted fruit, I trimmed away the deteriorated portions of the foam and returned it to the tank. I removed and back flushed the pickup tube and this filter screen. I began the reassembly process by dry fitting the gaskets to the carburetor. In this kit, there are two gaskets that look nearly identical. To prevent tearing the screw holes during installation, I pre-fit the screws to the gasket. This particular gasket has a tab that extends beyond the carburetor. I inserted a screw into the gasket tab and clamped the gasket in place while aligning the other four carburetor mount bolt holes. Next, I installed the carburetor main body onto the fuel tank and tightened the four mounting bolts with even pressure in a crisscrossed pattern. I found it's easier to access two of the mounting screws if you close the choke. This will reposition the linkage to give you more clearance. The governor control linkage is snapped into a nylon pivot, then attached to the fulcrum on the fuel tank support bracket. The choke linkage is attached to the upper arm of the engine control. Observe how the pin of the throttle control slider is inserted into the bent ear of this wire linkage. Now install the two bolts in the engine controls and run the throttle and the choke linkage to ensure there is no binding. Normally the fuel pump diaphragm would have been changed when the carb was removed but it didn't arrive with the rest of the parts. The carburetor was cleaned and the old parts were reinstalled to prevent contamination. Install the spring with its protective sleeve, then the diaphragm, followed by the gasket. Install the cover and the four Torx head machine screws and tighten in a crisscross pattern. Note the Briggs & Stratton website does not give Torx specifications for the carburetor bolts. Connect the positive crankcase ventilation tube to the carburetor and loosely install the hold down clamp. It's easier to connect the governor linkage and spring prior to connecting the electrical connections. To ensure good electrical connection, I clean the ignition control wires with a Dremel tool. One wire is attached with a ring terminal, the other with a pinch connector. I hung the carburetor assembly on the engine with one loosely installed bolt. With the carburetor assembly hanging loosely off the engine, I had two hands free to install the positive crankcase ventilation tube. Next, I partially installed the lower fuel tank mount bolt and removed the upper carburetor bolt. I inserted the gasket and reinstalled the bolt. I pivoted the gasket into position and tightened the bolt enough to prevent it from rotating. I used long nose pliers to insert the other mount bolt. While tightening the carburetor mount bolts, I alternated from side to side. Then I tightened the lower fuel tank mount strap. Lastly, I cycled the engine controls to be sure there was no binding of the linkages. I installed the anti-vibration strap and the muffler bolts next. The last step to installing the muffler is to crimp the ears over onto the bolts to prevent them from rotating loose. Slip the fan shroud into position and loosely install the bolts. There are three bolts across the top and one on each lower side. Pre-test the recoil mechanism to be sure it's operating smoothly prior to tightening the bolts. The lower air filter housing is held in place with four bolts. The air filter is installed with the pleats up 
Next, install the pre-filter and the cover. Verify the oil drain plug is properly installed. This style of small engine has no oil filter. Be sure to clean the funnel inside and out to prevent contamination. For easier starting, I chose Mobile One 10W30 synthetic motor oil. This engine has no dipstick. The fill level is the top of the oil fill port. Ethanol-free gasoline costs more, but it gives you the best performance and the longest service life. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourself and even learned something along the way. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And remember, subscribers are always welcome. This machine was designed to handle 3 inch diameter branches. After the sharpening and the tune up, it handled that and so much more.